Alice went down the rabbit hole without asking many questions, and you're about to do the same. Watch until the end to find out if Alice's experience happened in real life or if it was all in her head. Now let's get right to the dark secrets in Alice in Wonderland Disney didn't want you to notice. Curiosity and the Cheshire Cat from the looks of it, Alice isn't a day over 11 years old. Although she might be coming of age, she's still a child in every sense of the word. So despite being nursed into adolescence by her parents, all Alice wants is to have a little fun. So when she stumbles across a white rabbit with a pocket watch, she chooses to let her curiosity get the best of her. What a peculiar place to have a party. Although Alice in Wonderland is a movie for kids through and through, there are some pretty strong themes that jump out at adults. In this case, Alice's last words are still ringing in our ears. After all, she did say that giving in to curiosity could lead to some curious events. After falling down the rabbit hole, Alice encounters a world filled with impossibilities. So we're led to believe that curiosity did, um, exterminate the cat. But in this case, the cat represents Alice's old life or childhood, so to speak. When young Alice finds finally comes face to face with the Cheshire Cat, he instructs her on which way to go. Problem is, he keeps pointing in dubious directions. But I don't want to go among mad people. Oh, you can't help that. By the end of this scene, it's obvious that Alice has become one of the mad people she so desperately fears. In the end, the Cheshire Cat admits to not being all there, which makes us wonder if Alice isn't all there either. Could it be that Wonderland is a figment of Alice's imagination? Or did she really fall down a magic rabbit hole? The Kid of Hearts the Queen of Hearts is someone to be feared. After all, she likes nothing more than to see her servants' heads come off on a daily basis. She's big, proud, and loud, making her the obvious ruler of Wonderland. However, the same can't be said about the King of Hearts, who seems to be more of a child than a leader. The Queen of Hearts! <laughs> and the King. Although the king is supposed to be the main ruler, his wife dismisses him as does his kingdom. In this scene, the queen of hearts becomes enraged when she realizes that her white roses have been painted red. Since white roses represent innocence and beauty, the red roses represent love and lust. We can't help but feel as though the queen wants to keep her kingdom innocent. So in other words, the queen of hearts wants everyone to remain childish. Well, 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 now, uh, uh, let me see, my dear. It certainly isn't a heart. So, despite being married to the king, the queen chooses to treat him like a child. In fact, even the artists behind Alice in Wonderland animation chose to make him no bigger than a toddler. Knowing this, we think that the king should have been named the Kid of Hearts, because he comports himself like a child would, which is far from king-like. Painting the roses red can symbolize growing up, and those who grow up in Wonderland tend to lose their heads. Tea Party the thought of having a tea party with mysterious folk is all it took for Alice to plunge into the unknown. Despite not being invited to the Mad Hatter's tea party, Alice saw fit to be in attendance. When Alice spots the tea party from afar, she sees a cloud of smoke encircling the table. But when she gets a closer look, she sees that the teapots are the ones behind the steady stream of steam. <laughs> After breathing in the mysterious laughing gas, Alice can finally stoop down to a new level. She introduces herself to her new pals and asks them if they are celebrating a birthday, only to be introduced to a new concept. She doesn't know what an unbirthday is. How silly! <laughs> So what's an unbirthday? Well, why not let the Mad Hatter and the March Hare explain it to you themselves? One birthday every year. There are 364 unbirthdays. Although this scene might seem straightforward, it's riddled with tons of meaning. When put under the scope, this tea party becomes a celebration of youth. We're so used to celebrating our birthdays that we forget to enjoy the rest of the year. This tea party is a celebration of innocence, one that reminds us that our regular days are just as important as our actual birthdays. So basically, Alice is learning how to live in the present. Have you ever noticed how children can't wait to become big kids? Well, this reminds them to enjoy their youth while they're living in it. The Pressures of Growing Up If there are two characters that can get on anyone's nerves, it's Tweedledee and Tweedledum. When these twins are first introduced into the plot, they immediately rub Alice the wrong way. Although they might look childlike, these characters seem to represent adults. Just look at how they place themselves by Alice's side when she emerges from a hollow log. No, I suppose he must have... <gasps> 
This scene can very well represent birth and how parents stand by our side and teach us right from wrong. Alice passes through a dark log to find herself encircled by strange figures who have much to teach her. The first thing in a vision is to say, how do you do it? Shake hand, shake hand, shake hand. Tweedledee and Tweedledum latch onto Alice like a parent does a child, and desperately try to stop her from following the white rabbit. But it's clear that Alice wants nothing to do with them. She tries to escape their clutches, but they won't let her out of their sight. Because I'm following the white rabbit. Why? Well, I I'm curious to know where he's going. The identical twins change their tune when they find out that Alice is curious. Instead of encouraging her, they tell her scary stories that make her doubt herself. This is something that parents often do to children to keep them safe. So we're led to believe that Tweedledee and Tweedledum are nothing more than annoying parental figures who've come to reign on Alice's parade. A Nonsensical Tale when stumbling into a world like Wonderland, it's only normal to have a boatload of questions. So when Alice finally gets to the tea party, she wants nothing more than answers. Unfortunately for her, logical answers don't seem to exist in Wonderland. Throughout the film, Alice is struggling to find her voice and getting used to being talked over. Why is a raven like a writing desk? <laughs> Right when Alice gets her new friend's attention, he dismisses her by slamming his hammer and switching the subject. It is here that he utters the classic riddle that many of us remember from the Disney film. Why is a raven like a writing desk? This timeless riddle has puzzled many people, especially since no answer was ever provided. In 2010, Tim Burton directed the movie Alice in Wonderland, which was filmed with real-life actors. At the end of the film, Alice asks the Mad Hatter for the answer to this riddle, and here's what he says. So this puts an end to the century-old riddle. Basically, there is no right answer because the riddle makes no sense in the first place. This proves that Alice in Wonderland is a nonsensical body of work, but one that teaches us many things along the way. Gullible Children Alice's slow descent into Wonderland leaves her hungry for more, which is why she desperately opens doors and crawls through tight spaces. Before long, she realizes that her adventure isn't going to follow a linear path. Alice's voice of reason ends up being a doorknob, and it reminds her that she's too big to pass through the door. The door to Wonderland is small enough for a child to crawl through, but Alice has surpassed her childhood and is entering her teenage years, making her much too big to fit through the opening. Instead of turning her away, the doorknob encourages Alice to drink from a magic potion. Better look first, for if one drinks much from a bottle marked poison, before drinking the potion, Alice gives herself some advice that the doorknob doesn't understand, but he doesn't let her statement get to his head. Young kids often say things that make no sense to adults, but perfect sense to other children. But instead of trying to understand them, adults are quick to dismiss their logic and even quicker to encourage them to do as they say. Although Alice knew that she would regret drinking the potion, she listened to her guide and shrunk to three inches tall. A Sea of Frustration Shrinking to three feet tall is no joke, which is why Alice is eager to be on her way. Problem is, the doorknob doesn't have Alice's best interest at heart, which is why he lied to her for his own amusement. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, <laughs> I'm locked. After making her drink a random potion, the door reveals that he is locked, but instead of admitting that he tricked Alice into drinking the potion, he asks her if she has the key. When she admits to not having it, he tells her that she must have forgotten the key on the table, knowing full well that she didn't. Why don't you try the bottle on the table? Table? <laughs> you see, the key was never on the table in the first place, so it's obvious that the doorknob is pulling Alice's strings. Once again, the pesky doorknob convinces Alice to ingest something else. He makes a box of cookies appear out of thin air, and Alice takes a bite of the one that has Eat Me written on it. After the first bite, Alice becomes a giant, which amuses the doorknob to no end. Alice reaches her breaking point as soon as the doorknob starts to laugh at her. Big, salty tears start streaming down her face, causing a sea of frustration to appear. The doorknob's wicked ways cause Alice to cry like a young child would when met with a confusing scenario. In the end, this scene can represent how parents expect their kids to obey their every command, and how their expectations can cause temper tantrums to appear out of thin air. And much like the doorknob, parents usually regret their actions once the tears start falling. <laughs> you, you have to stop. Peer pressure. 
Most children have a hard time forming their own opinions, and how could they not? After all, their parents have been thinking for them since the day they were born. After being tricked by the doorknob and stranded in a sea of her own tears, she's lost. So she puts her faith in the first person she sees, which is something many children do, but shouldn't. Alice jumps from her bottle to reunite with society, only to realize that they aren't going to help her either. She tries to join the group, but ends up getting stepped on and ignored. This scene is symbolic in more ways than one. The more obvious one being that Alice is having a hard time integrating with society. Becoming a teenager is no small feat, which is why many teens give to peer pressure to get accepted into a social circle. Oh, I see! You'll never get dry that way! Get dry? At this point, Alice is soaking wet and desperate to get dry. So when the dodo tells her that running in a circle will get her dry, she only doubts him for a moment. But before long, Alice is giving in to pressure and doing what the other sea dwellers are doing. Who are you? Most of us struggle to find out our own identity for the majority of our lives, so we're not surprised that Alice had a hard time answering the caterpillar's redundant questions. <laughs> Who are you? Mental awareness tends to kick in around the time children turn into adolescents. During this time, the body goes through many changes, making it hard for individuals to know themselves inside and out. So when the caterpillar starts asking Alice questions, she fails to answer them. I'm afraid I can't explain myself, sir, because I'm not myself, you know. It goes without saying that adults tend to expect great things from young teens, despite the fact that they're still struggling to work things out. So when the caterpillar starts getting frustrated with Alice's answers, he starts disrespecting her personal space. <laughs> Who are you? The caterpillar blows smoke into her face, and she inhales whatever it is he's smoking without wanting to. This frustrates her, causing her to storm off. Although this scene might appear funny to the passerby, it might just symbolize why teenagers tend to go through bouts of anger and uncertainty. Alice tries to kick off the caterpillar's pink smoke and succeeds to be rid of his influence for a little while. Coping Mechanism Many of us have tried to figure out what the real message behind Alice in Wonderland is. And while we all have our own opinions, some make more sense than others. Alice's trip to Wonderland is something she's dreamed of, which is why it follows the guidelines she set out at the beginning of the film. I'm sorry. But how can one possibly pay attention to a book with no pictures in it? This insert proves that Alice likes to think outside of the box, and she's bored with how mundane her world can be. The thought of reading books with no pictures in them upsets her, which led her to say in the previous statement, Wanting to live in a world where every book has pictures in it sounds a lot like not wanting to grow up at all. Your world? <laughs> what nonsense. Now, nonsense. From where we're standing, Wonderland is nothing more than a coping mechanism, one that Alice created to stop herself from thinking logically. In her eyes, living in a nonsensical world is the goal, and abiding by normal standards is the enemy. In this scene, we clearly see that Alice is attending a tea party without an invitation. And since tea parties are only for young children, this can prove that Alice is bordering adulthood and desperately trying to backtrack. All in a dream. There are many clues that point towards Alice's experience being nothing more than a dream, or a daydream at best. However, a mighty wizard named Dumbledore once said, Of course it is happening inside your head, Harry, but why on earth should that mean that it is not real? It's just a rabbit with a waistcoat and a watch! Oh, my fairy whiskies! I made it! I made it! I made it! Alice's hallucinations start as soon as the water begins to ripple, indicating that her reality has changed. She dives right into the nonsensical world she so eagerly imagined, only to realize that it isn't the one she wants to live in. Despite entering a new and wonderful world, Alice ends up trying to escape it. But you are outside! What? See for yourself! This scene proves that Alice had in fact fallen asleep and dreamed up Wonderland. But does this make the entire experience fake? Perhaps the biggest and darkest secret found in Alice in Wonderland is that dreams can teach us the biggest lessons of all. Alice, will you kindly pay attention and recite your lesson? And while our dreams might not make a lot of sense, they always find a way to make us look forward to waking up and facing reality once again. So do you think that Alice really went to Wonderland? Or was it all a dream? Let us know in the comments below. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching and see you next time on The Things.